Our guest on Personally Speaking this week is the iconic actress, Susan Lucci, who is now also an ambassador for heart health. Stay with us. Hello and welcome to Personally Speaking. I'm your host, Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and the Emmy Award-winning actress Susan Lucci joins me now. Susan is best known for her role as Erica Kane on the ABC daytime drama All My Children, a role she played for 41 years. In May of 1999, after 19 nominations, Susan won the Emmy Award for Best Actress, a historic moment not only for Susan but for all of television. Shortly thereafter, she made her Broadway debut to rave reviews, playing the part of Annie Oakley in Annie Get Your Gun. Susan starred in the international hit Lifetime series Devious Maids and the highly rated series Deadly Affairs on Investigation Discovery. In 2022, Susan lost her beloved husband, Helmut. They were married for 53 years. Susan is a mother to Liza and Andreas and is a grandmother as well. She's here with us today to talk about her career, her Catholic faith, her family, and life after loss. Joining me now, I'm so pleased to welcome back to Personally Speaking, our friend Susan Lucci. Susan, thanks first of all for coming on the program. My first question is, when people look at you as they are now, they listen to you, um, so you're this thin, petite, beautiful woman, and yet we find out that you had some heart history, and I want to know what happened and what have you learned from it? And what can we all learn so that we too can be like Susan Lucci, heart healthy? Well, first of all, thank you. You asked that in such a nice way. Thank you very <laughs> much. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had never had a health issue at all. And um, uh, let's see, uh, it'll be four years ago in October. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a slight pressure on my chest, but slight. And I was in a restaurant with my husband waiting to be seated. And I thought, As most women do, I thought, oh, it'll go away. Oh, it's nothing. And it did go away by the time we were seated. The same thing happened about a week and a half later, except the um, pressure was also radiating around my rib cage to my back. I thought it was odd, but, you know, it couldn't be anything. My mother's 100 years old. And, uh, you know, we all thought I had all her genes because I never (laughs) had a health issue. But the third time I was actually shopping for a girlfriend's birthday present at the Americana in Manhasset. Mm -hmm. And uh, I felt that I could not ignore what I was feeling. Wow. And I, I, the, the salesperson took the gift to be wrapped. And because I was feeling this, I sat down on the bench and I was feeling what I had heard a woman describe in an interview many years ago. I mean, I think I was maybe in college when I heard this and I had no reason to remember it. But she talked about the fact that often a woman's symptoms for a heart attack are different than a man's. What she had experienced was the feeling of an elephant pressing on her chest. That's what I was feeling. And so I sat down, the manager came over to me and asked me if I was okay. I said, I'm trying to assess this. She said, what is it? I told her very calmly. She said to me, Susan, my car is parked right outside. I can get you to St. Francis, which happened to be a mile down the road. Very good move. Right? I can get you there faster than an ambulance will arrive. Right. And there'll be no fanfare. Just mm-hmm. get in my car, we'll go. And um, I said, okay. And I got in the car and I called uh, Dr. Schlafmitz, who's the head of cardiology there, who was my husband's cardiologist. As I said, I had no reason right, to have right. a doctor, but I called him. He was everything his reputation is. He said, I'll meet you at the ER. Your symptoms are substantial. Um, in the car ride on the way there, Again, like most women, I thought, oh, it's going to go away. And anyway, I don't want to um, take this very, very renowned doctor away from patients who really need him. And the main thing I was thinking is that this is my day off. I have too much to do. I can't be doing this. Like all of us, right? right? I'm not going to give that up. <laughs> no, and, and, and I was not on my to-do list. So in any case, um, Dr. Schlafmitz ordered a, a CAT scan and found out that I had a 90% blockage in my main artery and a 70% one in an adjacent artery. 
He said, I can fix it. Got to be late in the evening. He did. I had two stents put in. Were you frightened? I wasn't. Um, actually, he said, I can fix it. We can go up to the OR now, which was getting to be 10 o'clock at night. And I said, well, shouldn't I come in first thing? He said, or you can be at 630 in the morning. So well, shouldn't I come in first thing in the morning? Your A-team will be in, be all fresh, ready to go. He <laughs> said, <to> you. <laughs> see, see, I didn't, I didn't. So the A-team is already, he said, my A-team's already on the way in. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, shouldn't I go home and get a good night's sleep in my Nobody own bed and come back? That, right? <laughs> so, so I think you understand. Yeah, this is big. <laughs> this is big. Yeah. And um, the next day when I was discharged, I found out how big. Uh, the nurses told me, had I not acted on my symptoms, had I not come to the hospital, that most likely I would have had the widow maker. Um, so I learned because had I not been out, had I been home, I probably, I do Pilates and I work out mm -hmm. all the time. So I thought, oh, I probably just need to have some water because water feeds muscles. And, uh, and maybe you been someone down. who checks on your general health every year? Yes. And nothing had come up. Nothing had come up. This was October, and I had had my my checkup, my yearly checkup in July, and I learned that EKGs don't always tell the story. Mm -hmm. EKGs are only good at the right. moment, right. and to make be as a comparison. But um, I did ask the doctor, you know, tell me about my actual heart. How is my actual heart? Um, because I. I have been eating healthy, and I do work out all the time. And I wanted to know then how is my heart. And he said to me, he said, you have the heart of a 20-year-old. Okay, good. And I asked him to repeat that several times. <laughs> <laughs> Hear it again. I want yeah. to be sure it was Can true. I record that now? Exactly. Yeah. And um, on the way home in the car, I, I just felt magnetized to get the story out. The same way that that woman had, had told what she experienced, mm -hmm. and I remembered it for no reason. Right. I, I called my publicist, um, and asked her on the way home. My husband was driving, said, Jessica, I am just magnetized to tell this. Maybe what, even if one woman out there will hear it, as I was lucky enough to hear that other interview, maybe it will help them uh, take care of themselves. I said, because I can't pass on the specifics of my good luck that I had guardian angels on work. each shoulder, right, right. that the manager of the boutique also had a degree in nursing. <laughs> And had a car outside waiting, waiting to take to you. Waiting to right? take me to, say, to the best heart hospital all around. <laughs> there are no accidents, Susan. No. no. It's just meant to be. Yeah. But I can pass on the takeaways, which is put yourself on your to-do list. Mm -hmm. So many of us, as I thought, have too much to do. And if, if you have any symptoms, listen to your body. If it's not behaving the way it's normal to you, act on it. The doctor's not going to send you away. Don't be afraid to take his attention. You need his attention. And have you been good at doing follow-up personally? I have. Well, you know, oh, that's the other thing. I asked the doctor. He said, looking at you, you would never suspect that you were a heart right. patient. No. And he said, and we had become friends, too. He was my husband's cardiologist. And he said, we've eaten you, with you. I know that you eat. I know how you eat. You eat salmon and kale and blueberries <laughs> and... He said, so there's no reason. But what I had was calcium deposits. Uh, and that was the DNA from my dad, okay. my otherwise fabulous dad. He's mm. the best dad in the world. But he had calcium buildup. He had calcium buildup. And he actually did have a heart attack. And he did pass away from it. But I don't think I ever even thought to tell a doctor my dad's heart history or mm -hmm. any health history. I think we tend to, um, I guess, relate to the same sex parent. And we think, and besides, my mother was 100 years old at that time. I definitely wanted to have all of that. You right. know? I think I have but the rest of her genes. It, it related issue. Um, yesterday, I was 30, and now I'm 70. I cannot believe what happened. This whole process of aging, especially in, in a, a job like yours where you're in public, have you always been comfortable with the reality that if we're still alive, we're aging? Oh, I never thought of it that way. <laughs> so right. Um, I remember when I turned when I turned sixty. Um, I I, I was, was last a, week, right? Last week, you're right. You were thirty, and then <laughs> yes. How did this happen? Yeah. Um, I called my mother. My mother is thirty years was thirty years older than me, and I said, "Mother, how, how do you do this? This this is a very big number. I can hardly say it." 
And the truth is, when I would say the number, it seemed like it must be my parents. It certainly couldn't be me. Right. But, but she was. She. Um, I said, Mom, how do you how did you deal with this when you turned sixty and now with your age? How do you deal with it? She was a pause and she said, I just don't think about it. And I thought that was probably the best advice. Yes. Because you're still you. You're just you. Yep. Keep on doing just what you number, do. Right. And uh, everybody's different. Everybody's physiology is different. You know. But I I hear people say, well, I'm having a senior moment. You know, I can't remember. I can't remember. I have a theory that it's because we have that much more crammed in there. That's right. Right. It's yep. like a, yeah. You know, we have bigger files up there. Yes. Up there. <laughs> Now, go back for a second to that night when uh, you had this thing straightened out finally. He said to you, don't worry, I can take care of this. But you know and I know that when they're playing with your heart in any way, it's possible Susan Lucci could have checked out. Mm -hmm. Did you give that any thought? And had it happened that night that you went home to God, would you have been scared already? I probably would have been both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the doctor, Dr. Schlafmitz, did have a heart surgeon in the operating room too just in case when they went in mm -hmm. they saw anything and this was by the way not open heart surgery it was right to go through the yes yeah. and actually they um put a stopper in that's made of collagen and they said don't worry there's a little collagen he said collagen from the inside <laughs> i have no problem with collagen <laughs> <laughs> i'm familiar with collagen <laughs> Suddenly you brighten it. Yeah, this is my kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so you weren't overwhelmingly frightened. I wasn't. Um, in terms of being ready, uh, I I really have um, inherited from my mother um, a relationship that I'm so grateful for. Um, she, my mother was not overtly religious, but she had a devotion to the Blessed Mother. And I did inherit that from her. Mm. And I'm so grateful. And beyond that, I have always had a relationship with God, but I would say in terms of being ready, maybe maybe more so now. Um, I lost my husband 14 months ago, and no words for how awful it is, and there's no getting around it. It's awful. Yeah. Uh, I, I miss him so much, but it does, at the same time, I realize that God must have some divine plan. Um, I wish this wasn't it, mm -hmm. but I understand that and on the other side of the coin i'm so grateful to have had yeah. this love in my life yeah so i know how rare it is yeah and how grateful we're here with susan lucci and i'm glad she brought the topic of helm and her husband over for half a century um i'm a believer i believe in the life to come i believe in heaven i buy the whole thing however two weeks ago my mom at 102 went home to god and maybe especially because we don't have spouses and children, she was the absolute best friend of my life. And I'm, I'm so having sorry. a terrible time with it. Yes. You know, it's not a question of belief. I think she's in heaven, but uh, it's killing me. And I, I just want to, how do you get through it? There's there's no easy way out, is there? No easy way no. out. No. Yeah. It's, it's, um, I've done a lot of reading about, about, about the whole thing. And I've met with um, Monsignor Blanc. Yeah. And also a rabbi. Oh, good. Mine, <laughs> You're covering Jewish, the whole Judeo-Christian thing. Yeah. Good. And they each have something to tell me. Yeah. And, um, you know, I I want to believe, and I'm 99% of the way there, right. that there's. A, I really want to believe there's a life after death. And I want to believe that you will that see him again. I will see him, yeah. that he didn't just turn into some ether. Right. I want right. to put my right. arms Oh, energy. Him. No, not oh, energy. energy. Don't tell me this. Yeah. <laughs> but they said, you'll see your mother, but she'll be energy. Now, I want my mother. <laughs> uh, she lived here with me for the past four years, and we were roommates. And uh, so I now I have, we all go through this regret thing. When she wake me up for the fourth time in the night, I say, Ma. And then in the morning, I'd say, I'm sorry, I was a little short with you. And she said, Jimmy, at 102, I don't remember you being short with me. <laughs> I was happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, she was sharp till the end, but I just oh. missed. I just wanted to, now I'm only two weeks into it, but like it takes a long time. Yeah. And I mean I was, I'm fourteen months past the actual passing of the moment, but you know, last night I had a terrible time. Did you, you know, it it you you put one foot in front of the other and you do all the things that can help and then it just washes over you and there are certain triggers too. like 
memories of like it can be a memory it can be all i'm like i'm you know all the firsts all yeah, the firsts yeah. my husband and i were everywhere together yeah. and so the first time here or the first time there and, and those things they are you know or a photo that just pops right, up right you know how on your phone sometimes uh, memories pop up mm-hmm. you know there's constant right yeah and i and i don't want to see them necessarily i'm glad they're there i'm glad they're stored i'm glad i can access them i want to find out how i can back up my pictures you're right yeah right. because they give us some contact with the people we love but and yeah we want real contact real yeah contact. yeah there's a lion in John's gospel where he says, uh, when a woman is in labor, she's sad because her time has come. But when she remembers, when she has the child, she no longer remembers her pain or joy that a child has been born into the world. He says, in the same way, you are sad for a time, but I shall see you again. And when I see you again, our hearts will be filled with the joy that no one can take from us. I want that for Helmut. I want that for Cecilia, my mom. But I just wondered, is there is there a particular way to cope like um, I'm hoping that by jumping back into ministry and I'm back to doing counseling and marriages and baptisms, that maybe being outward directed is. Did you did you close off or did you go right out afterwards? Oh, um, did you need some private of, time? Or? Yes, but but I'm so again so grateful to um, the friends. Yeah, that we had. We have to remain to my friends. Yeah. And they like to be out and about, and oh, so good. do I. <laughs> and, and that part of my life seems uh, there's a continuity to that because we we were very active, and um, so that part that part has helped. And also, as you say, you going back to your ministry. Um, I was so grateful that I had all the work with the American Heart Association yeah. and also the American Stroke Association, who had passed away from a stroke. Mm-hmm. And I real I, I learned uh, that there's a great connection, heart. Yeah brain connection yep. is a lot to that. And so um, I just had an auction to benefit um, the American Stroke Association. And uh, for research, hopefully they're going to do even, you know, find newer, quicker ways to right. to deal with you, this. You can do stuff with that if apparently you get it early. Mm-hmm. One of my dearest friends for so many years was Patricia Neal, who had oh. 39 terrible strokes. Oh. We're oh. trying now to get a stem. She'd be 100 and 2025, oh so God. trying to get them to not because of her acting, but because she then spent the rest of her life trying to raise consciousness as you are about stroke awareness. And mm-hmm. People don't even know much about it, you know? Mm-hmm. They think it just magically happens, but there are things that are signs ahead of time and things you can do quickly, quickly. to try to save the person, quickly, you know? Exactly. I was hoping with their research that they might be able to come up with something akin to an EpiPen. Yes. You yeah. know, catch why it, not catch stop it? it right. Stop it. Or, for example, um, many people who have any kind of heart issue are on blood thinners. Mm-hmm. My husband had AFib, but no symptoms. So we were lucky in that way. It never affected our lives. But um, unfortunately, many stroke people, you know, do what Susan Lucci did. It'll go away, this pain, you know. <laughs> yeah, so it's nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Just deny, deny, deny. Let's go back to helmets. So for those who don't know, these kids fell in love when they were kids, literally. And you made it work for over half a century. We have pre canine couples here every weekend. And I like to say to them that uh, Nicholas Sparks, when he was our guest, said it's very simple to have a good marriage. Choose wisely. What in the world at 19 did you know about life to choose wisely that you picked the guy who was so right for you forever? You, you, my parents thought I was too young to get married, and I thought, no, no, I'm fine. Actually, I was, I was, um, I worked for him when I was 18, and then um, we got married. I was uh, 22, so. In any case, that's just right, right. transparency here. <laughs> they really meant Full young. Disclosure. But I was young, and Helmut was 10 years older, and so, you know, he had a lot more. He was very self-assured, and he was very um, uh, decisive. Austrian, so much right? Austrian, yes, yes. They're very convicted people. Very, yes. very, very. Yeah, <laughs> and he was very authentic. He was very confident, and so much so that he made me laugh. He was so decisive and um, about, about, about our relationship. Um, <laughs> So one of us, anyhow, had had a lot of right, more right, life right. experience. <laughs> but my instincts told me that he or he was very smart and he was very handsome. And he had that cute Austrian accent. So. <laughs> that all combined to all make combined. it impossible not to do it. <laughs> but you, your parents said slow it down? Oh, yeah. My dad, they told me this much later. My dad said to my mother one night, if Susan keeps seeing this man, he's going to make her marry him. And... um and he kind of did, but 
I fell in love with him more every yeah. moment, every day, every year. Yeah. Let's talk about these parents. Uh, Susan has a best-selling book, and it's still out there, All My Life, her autobiography, and I hope she can write another one because she's been through a lot since that book was written. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about in the book you celebrate so often your parents and what they meant to you. Raising you, what did they do right? Uh, there was never a doubt in my mind that they loved me. Mm. They loved me. They, My dad... Um, gave me uh, his he taught me how to draw and he taught me how to work with pastels took me horseback riding and ice skating they each in their way gave me their time their attention their love their nurturing yeah and they were i was a cheerleader in high school <laughs> and i was in all the plays but they were always in the audience for right, me right you know then i i never had a doubt in my mind you were the priority that i was loved by them yeah well, there was six years between my brother and me, too, my older brother. So they could, you know, give each of us that. You were the favorite. Attention. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm the favorite of my family. I understand. <laughs> my sisters will tell you, yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know, my mother said that after having my older sister, and then back then they didn't know ahead of time, and out I popped, and she said, the whole unit in the hospital, it's a boy. <laughs> I said, I hope you didn't do that around my older sister. You know? And we were happy to have her, too. But. Now, go back, because you said earlier in the program that mom was not overtly religious, mm -hmm. but she had a devotion to Our Lady. But Susan, you made a choice somewhere along the line to actually practice your faith. Mm -hmm. um, where did that come from? Uh, I'm not 100% sure. I know that my dad um, never preached about, he didn't miss Mass on Sunday. He always okay. went, this is just a practice of being a Catholic. And yeah. uh, he led by example, I would say. And I, I appreciated that. Um, and when I had children, it's really when I started going back to to church. I, mm. I, I wanted to raise them responsibly. And I, I started to understand the value of having that kind of, those core values in your life mm -hmm. and that foundation. And so I started going back then, and, and then I realized how much I was gaining from it, too. Wow. And okay. how important it was for me to say thank you to God for all the blessings. Susan Lucci, for those who don't know, is this amazing actress. And I mention that because you're a great communicator. So I want to ask a advice question. The kids at pre and when I say, why aren't you going to church, will say, I'm not getting something out of it. The priests that are talking very often are foreigners. I don't get their accent. Mm -hmm. They have all these criticisms for what they don't get in church. So when you go, what can we do to make the church a more accessible place that reaches out to people and brings them in. I mean, you've sat through enough masses to know good, bad, and indifferent. Mm -hmm. What should we do better? Well, first of all, I have to say, I, I agree with some of the comments that yeah. you just said to me, yeah. you know, uh, and that the acoustics in the church are not the best. Right. And a person has a very heavy accent. I live with a man with an accent, but <laughs> I know about that. Yeah. And, but if you're with a priest telling you what he feels is important to tell you, but you can't understand either mm -hmm. because of the acoustics or the combination with a heavy accent that doesn't make you want to go. No. And I think a lot of it does depend on the individual the priests. Um, the bond that you form with them, yes, was it and, reaching you? But they're reaching you, you know, if, um, and, and again, the listener the person, the parishioner, it's different how our ears are all hearing what we're hearing. Um, but I found for myself, a very peaceful time you know when you have a career and you're raising children there isn't a lot of peaceful time you know <laughs> right. so it became yeah. a yeah. time of right. um reflection and and a chance um for gratitude promise i promise my last question um do you talk to helmet now all the time yeah all the time. good i'm not crazy if i do that to not people i love okay oh no also good. helmet was not shy Helmut's <laughs> talking to me. <laughs> Are you seeing signs of his oh, presence? Oh, yes. Yes? That they tell me it happens, but I, you've had it happen. Yes. Um, there is a book called Signs, and okay. it's the first book that a friend sent me after Helmut passed away. And I was reading it. Apparently, you can even ask for signs. I, um, and they are quite amazing. Uh, I don't Oh, it At this point, I don't ask for them. I was told about other signs that I didn't even know existed. And then there they were. It's, it's 
I very find cool. it wonderful. It's yes. very cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's very cool. My mom died two days after Mother's Day, so I was so oh. thankful to have her for Mother's Day. And when I gave her a gift on Mother's Day at the table inside the rectory, but she was looking at me, and then occasionally she'd look above me, and I'd say, what are you looking at? I'd say, my mom and dad are here. And I was like, come on, Mom. And I, th I think she was telling me the truth. They were taking a home, so. you know? And uh, it's like, that's that's the first sign, and the only one so far I've seen. But like, who is she looking at? And she said, my parents, my brothers, my sisters, they're all here. And, and two days later, she was gone. Yeah. And I didn't know it was coming that fast, but I'm so grateful she's being reunited with the people she loved. As I'm praying and hoping that you're going to have a great reunion with them, but you know? Yeah. But that's what they say. But the people who you loved, who loved you, are there. Yeah. Coming Everyone for you. who's had, well, they're waiting for you. When it, people who have had a, a, a near death experience, yes. whether they're a, a senior citizen or they're two years old, when they both tell the same thing. A two year old, a four year old have no way to have read about this or heard about this. It is simply the experience. Um, Dr. Elizabeth Kubler Ross True. has written about this. Right. And um, those stages, are they real? The stages that Kubler Ross talks about, the anger, the denial, all those things. You know, um, in my reading, what I feel good about is that it's not that I'm getting direction from what I'm reading as mm -hmm. to how to go through. But I feel that it's kind of, I am, it's chronicling what I am going yes, through. Yes, yeah. Um, and you're not alone. And is, that I'm not alone in that. Yeah. really comforting. Yeah. But um, I will say the anger part I haven't felt yet. And that surprises me because I could get angry. Right. I'm half Italian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I always say even in homilies and funerals, if you want to shake your fist in God's face because you want this person back, He's God. He loves us no matter what. So if you need to express anger, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Some people have this, oh, I can't be angry. I'm not sure you can. Not that he made the death happen, but that you're God. You could have given me more time. Yeah. More time. Yeah. yeah. We all want more, time. want more time. Even at 102, I want more time. I want to thank Susan Lucci for being with us again. We've done several shows before. I love having Susan on because uh, what you see is what you get. There's not any pretense here. She just calls it like she sees it. She's honest. She's sensitive. She's kind. Happens to be very talented, too, but I didn't want her on because she's a great actress. I wanted on because she's so real, and I thank Susan Lucci for being on Personally Speaking. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're thank best. you. You're the best. Thank you. As we end today's program, if you'd like to reach out to me for any reason, you can get me at personallyspeakingpodcast at gmail.com. Aside from listening to us on Sirius XM, the Catholic channel, you can also watch us on YouTube by going to Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Losanti. Please hit like and subscribe. We're also, as you probably know, on Facebook at Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Osanti. And now we're also on Instagram at Personally Speaking Podcast. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer, Personally Speaking. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.